Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. Today we'll start working with the Kiddo language. You can also read the written version of this video on my Python programming blog at prospercoder.com. But before we rewrite our app using the Kiddo language, let's have a look at what we have. In the previous part, we left off with the basic Kiddo app written entirely in Python. Here's the code again. Import Kiddo, from Kiddo.app import app, then you have to import label. And here is the class which inherits from app. It's called Hello World app. This class returns a label with the text Hello World. And here is the part where we actually run the code. I also mentioned that for such a basic program, it doesn't make much sense to split it into two files, one for the logic and one for the presentation. However, let's do it just so that you know how to do it. Well, our program contains just one widget, the label. This is all as far as presentation is concerned. We'll move that part to a new file and leave the rest in the main.py file. So after we remove the presentation part from the main.py file, it's where the build method inside the Hello World app class returns the label. This is what we'll have. Just let's remove this. As you can see, now we're just telling the app that a label should be used, but it doesn't know anything more about the label. In particular, it doesn't know what text should go in the label. This is what the Kiffy file is going to take care of. By the way, I'm going to call the files written in the Kiffy language KV or Kiffy files for the sake of brevity. These files are easily recognizable by the KV extension. Now we are ready to create the Kiwi file. Actually, there are two approaches to this. If you have just one Kiwi file, you can go with the simpler approach that I'm going to present as first. But if you have multiple Kiwi files, which will be the case in our program as we proceed, you often have to take the slightly more complicated approach that I'm going to discuss as second. Anyway, first a simpler approach. In this approach, we use a naming convention according to which we name the file the same as the app class. So this is the class which inherits from app. But without the app part, this is the app part of the name, which as I mentioned in the previous part was quite important, and all in lowercase. So let's create a new file and name it accordingly. So all lowercase, hello world, without this app part, and the extension is kv. Fine. Our hello world kv file has been created. Now, it opens in a new tab, and here we can type the Kiva language code. We're going to talk about the Kiva language soon, but for now, let's just create a label in Kiva language. So, we use angled brackets to define a class, and the class is label colon. We have to indent our code. And here we have one property, text, which we have to set. And just like before, let's set it to hello world. So as I just said, we're going to talk about the key language in more detail later on. For now, it's enough to say that this is all you need to take care of the label. This part 
label in angle brackets means we're working on the label class and below we set the text property to a string of our choice. Hello world in our example. Now let's save this file, Control S, and go back to our main.py file. And now we can run the program. For example, by hitting this button over here. And you can see the same app window as before with our label in it. And now let's have a look at the second approach. This is the one without a naming convention. First of all, let's get rid of the Kiwi file we just created by right clicking it and selecting delete. Hello world, right click, delete, confirm. So our Kiwi file doesn't exist anymore. Now let's create a new file and name it example kv. New file example.kv. So as you can see now, the name of this file is different than the name of this class. Hello world, and here example. Hit enter to create file. And here we should type the same text as before. So the same code. Label text hello world. Let's save it. And let's go back to main.py. And now let's run our program again. Well, this time you get a blank window without a label. This is because the main pi file doesn't know that it should be linked with the example kv file. It can figure it out on its own because we can have multiple kv files. So how should it know which one to choose? That's why we have to tell it explicitly that we want it to use the example kv file. To do that, we need the builder class from the kv.lang module. It contains the load file function that we can use to load the file we need. Okay, so let's modify our main pile file so that it imports the class and loads the file. Here's the code. Here, we must import the builder class from kv.lang. From kv.lang, import builder. We must also load the Kiwi file that we need. Builder load file and here is our file example.kv Good. If you now run the program it will work again. But as mentioned before, there's no need for importing the builder class and using the load file function in such a basic program like ours. The first approach with the naming convention is the way to go. Now we can delete the example kv file because we're not going to need it anymore. And let's recreate the hello world kv file. So we're going to use the naming convention. Hello world kv. Let's type our code back here. Label text hello world save. And let's make all the necessary changes here in our main.py. So we don't need this and this. This is how our file, Python file, should look like now. We can also add the name of the file for clarity because we're going to have more files soon. Here at the top. File name main.py. Here we have the file. Here the class returns label. 
without specifying the label in more detail, which is the task of this KV file. And here also we can add this line with the name of the file. This is not necessary, of course, but this will make our code a bit more ordered, especially when we have more files. So now we've been using just the text property of the label class so far, but this class has a lot of other interesting properties. In the next part, we'll have a look at some of them. Let's one more time save the file and run it. It works. Good. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.